Alright people, Zarn Thwomp here, and welcome to episode 72 of Dual Destinies. Last time, Edgeworth accused Athena of murdering her mother in the first degree. That's right, basically, Edgeworth immediately jumps to the conclusion that Athena, who was sick and tired of her mother using her for experiments, basically felt that death was the only option. That basically Athena, this 11 year old girl, was basically thinking to her mind and with deliberate intent that she was going to murder her mother. Just no manslaughter, first degree murder. And Edgeworth has been sticking firm to that, even though he was in that sort of situation himself back in the day, what with DL6. Unless, of course, is Edgeworth hiding something from us in that regard? Was Gregory's death really all that? Was that one bullet that was fired at Manfred? Was that really all that accidental? But anyways, other than that, we were going through and cross-examining Fulbright, who was reading from Aura's own investigation, her notes on the matter. Even though Aura has no investigation expertise whatsoever, she is a she is she is the she is the very definition of biased party, basically. So just how that would even be considered as viable in this trial, I don't even know. But anyways, just to start things off. As you can tell, we are down to one notch on the on the legitimacy bar. So anyways, so the reason for that is that this game actually has two bad endings, basically. That just the one you get depending on which part of the trial you fail at. If you fail before, basically, Simon is proven innocent. Objection! Mr. Edgeworth, are you aware of the contradiction between that statement and this piece of evidence? No, I am not aware, Mr. Wright, because there's nothing here I need to be aware of. Ouch, that was harsh. Mr. Wright, you... Okay, sorry, sorry. Do, Mr. Wright, do you still intend to, to claim a contradiction in light of Prosecutor, Prosecutor Edgeworth's honest response? Well, if Mr. Edgeworth doesn't think there's a contradiction, maybe there really isn't. I'd appreciate it if you do, if you do your own thinking from now on, Mr. Wright. That's enough. I see no need to further prolong this trial. The defense's case is insufficient to overturn the prosecution's claims. This court finds the defendant, Athena Sykes. Guilty. Wait, what? They took the bad ending away? Okay, looks like I'm going to need to basically start failing at random parts of the case. Maybe it's during... Maybe it's when Simon jumps in. Okay. Hold it. Yeah, I actually pressed this statement earlier when I was just trying to spam evidence. So if I actually miss anything, that's why. Your regular recharge. What is that exactly? I have to refill my battery's power or else I stop working. I go to the lab to do that. So that recharge occurred around 2 p.m., around the time of the murder. That's right. I go every day at 2 p.m. Okay, good, good. I didn't skip over anything. Hold it! Hugged her? Huh? Which Edgeworth took to mean stabbed her with a weapon? You said the two of them were talking before Miss Sykes hugged her mother, is that right? Yeah, the chances are Edward doesn't even know what a hug feels like. The closest thing Edward felt to a hug during his during his youth was basically when Francisca whipped him. Just whipped him when he moved into the Von Karma household. Just just Francisca, hello little brother! And then Edward goes to hug and then just whap, whip. Oh my gosh, but on that ground, it's just Edgeworth. Edgeworth's father just not can help but imagine that one SpongeBob is that we're basically SpongeBob was trying to see if Mr. Krabs was a robot, basically. Mr. Krabs, Squid Squidward's father never hugged him. Isn't that sad? Mr. Squidward can't hug himself during his own break time. You said the two of them were talking before. Miss Sykes hugged her mother, isn't that right? Yes, they were talking very loudly, but I couldn't tell what they were saying. Couldn't tell? Even though they were speaking so loudly? I'm only allowed to listen to voices that are directed at me. Hmm. If it listened to every voice, it would be, be it would be a little better than a mo it would be a little better than a mobile eavesdropper. Well, that explains why some of Panko's testimony is so vague. 
It's a shame that our little friend wasn't listening in, however. We could have learned what they were talking about just before Miss Sykes was killed. Now then, what happened after that? Hold it! I don't want to delve too deeply here, but... Could you tell us how the victim appeared to and act at this moment? Mommy, my sister was very surprised when she was hugged. I heard her heart pound. Her heart? Mr. Wright, have you forgotten about this document we found in the Robox Lab? These robots have, robots have a heartbeat detection system. Now that he mentions it, I do remember reading something like that there. They, they detect the presence of people by the sound of their heartbeats. But wait a minute. That means if Dr. Sykes really did die at this moment... Panko, how was Dr. Sykes after she fell down? Could you still hear the sound of her heartbeat? Let's see. The moment she fell, her heart was pounding. After that, I don't know. I started recharging just then. Of all the unlucky th timing, if you had heard anything after that, it could have possibly proved that the hug wasn't actually the moment of the murder. I'm very sorry. I'm afraid I don't know. I'm very sorry. The robot is designed to go into sleep mode automatically, so it can't be helped. But it doesn't appear to be... It does... Uh, but it does appear it detected an increased heart rate at the moment of the stabbing. Ugh! After Mommy met his heart started pounding in surprise, they fell by the window. It was the, it was the round window on the workbench side of the room. The workbench, huh? Paco must be talking about the table to the right where the giant robot is now. Is there something critical in Panko's statement just now? There is. Your Honor, I believe this statement is critical. I'd like to add it to her testimony. Very well. Very well. Panko, could you please add that statement to your testimony? That's a good little girl. Yes, we protect Panko in this house. Hold it! Let's see. There are two round windows in the robotics lab. Which one did you mean? The one on the right, near the hanging scroll. That hanging scroll was Mommy Metis's prized possession. Okay, in the pictures of the crime scene from seven years ago, there is definitely a hanging scroll and a Japanese theater mask hanging on the workbench side wall. But is there some problem with the statement? Hold it! Prosecutor Blackwell. I wonder what he, w he went in there for. His objective! I don't know! I don't know! All he said was nothing personal, kid! And then everything went dark! Hmm... I guess I can't very well ask Panko to speculate. So what happened after Prosecutor Blackwell arrived? Hold it! You don't remember what happened next? Hmm... An error, huh? I wonder if... All data is suddenly cut off at that point. I don't know anything after that. The answer to that question is right here. According to the defense's theory, this photo shows when the robot was being taken apart. Exactly. We can conclude that Panko's error was the result of her being dismantled. Indeed, the parties of these robots are designed to be controlled remotely by a separate computer. Yes, that's basically what Mrs. Black will explain to us, too. She said their hearts and memories are stored on a separate computer. When the witness was taken apart, she lost the use of her body, but not her memories. That's how she is now able to give testimony about the events of that day. Fascinating. It's as if she can be seriously wounded, but her soul still burns. There are st there are a few parts of Pongo's testimony that are hard to interpret. Edgeworth chose to interpret Hug the Stabbed. But I'd better try to iron out who did what, where, did what, where, and to whom for myself. Hold on, Athena. I'm going to save you. Yeah, basically, go over here. Okay. And... Objection. Present. Ponko, your statement may have just inspired a breakthrough. I was helpful. Hooray! I'm so happy. Just to be sure, let's go over it again, okay? The victim fell near the window on the workbench side of the room. However... Her body was discovered on the operating table. 
But both the operating table and the workbench are two are two very different locations. Exactly, Your Honor. We've just learned a new crucial fact. What could explain the two different locations of the body? I'll tell you what. Oh crap, I actually said the wrong thing. In any case, the defendant moved the body. Hmm, that does seem like a plausible explanation. Is that really your final answer? Huh? Oh, he's right. A little kid couldn't possibly move to a dog body like that. And the last thing I want to do is cast more suspicion at the uh, at the end anyways. Mr. Ro Mr. Roy, your response? Um, can you just forget I ever said that? I misinterpreted things! Okay, it looks like we're redoing that. Hurrah! Okay. Le okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, load the game. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, because Edra does actually go... Yeah, but just, it's kind of odd, though, basically, how Edgeworth isn't saying, Yes, right, that is exactly what is happening. <laughs> just Edgeworth doesn't jump on it. Yeah, I can't believe I actually selected the wrong thing. Okay. Okay, send your photo. Yes, breakthrough. Honko is happy. The world is right. Okay. Come on, come on. Okay. We're not gonna mess this up again. An 11 year old girl could have moved the heavy body of an adult. So the only explanation is that the victim walked to the operating table himself. So frankly, you'd think that Phoenix is the back of his mind. I don't know, Athena has always been unusually strong for as long as I've known her. In other words, what Panko observed near the workbench couldn't possibly have been the moment of the murder. Phew! I am very relieved to hear that. Glad to know that the murder wasn't committed in front of, the li of little Ponko here. Yes, as we just heard in the testimony, Miss Sykes hugged her mother, nothing more. Objection. There is no such thing as a gentle hug, Mr. Wright. Right, 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 right. It's been eight years, but you're still just as green as ever. Green? Well, I can't recall ever seeing Mr. Wright anything but a blue suit. Hey, blue's my favorite color. What can I say? But the judge saw Phoenix in Turnabout Trump, as well as seen Phoenix in Turnabout Trump, basically. Phoenix was a, was the defendant in that case. Phoenix took the witness in that case. The judge outright talked to Phoenix while he was in his hobo garb, basically. The judge has seen Phoenix in something other than a blue suit. Apparently, the judge cannot remember more than a year in the past. Yet he can remember the edge where the Phoenix going at it. The judge's memory is selective. If the defendant couldn't move the body herself, she could have had it moved for her. Moved for her, but Miss Sykes and Dr. Sykes were the only ones there. I agree. Since this robot is equipped I agree, since this robot is equipped with a heartbeat detection system, it would have been aware of another person's presence if someone else had been there. We can therefore conclude that the defendant and the victim were the only ones present. Then who do you suggest move the body? Don't you know it's in the nature of a robot to help people do things? Miss pa Miss Panko, allow for me to ask you a question. My name is Panko, say it with me, Panko. I believe you said you were cleaning after Dr. Sykes fell down. Did you happen to move something large onto the operating table? Yes, yes I did. Athena asked me to. Athena asked you to? And what did you move, little Panko? I don't know, unless something has an ID tag. I can't tell what it is. An ID tag, you say? Yes, a tag with a barcode on it. We roll out scan them to tell us what a thing is. Hmm, that paper in the lab did mention something about that. 
Recognize people by scanning their spacesuit or uniform jacket ID tag, it said. So it would appear that Miss Panko here can't identify what has moved. My name is Panko! But we humans have the power to imagine what it was, do we not? What we do? Hmm, well, I do at the very least. Miss Panko, on the defendant's command, move the body onto the operating table. Gah! Panko, did you really move Dr. Sykes' body? This is really important. Isn't there any way you could tell? I don't know. Without an ID tag, I can't tell. Give it up, right? If the victim's heart was stopped, the robot's detective system would be useless. Furthermore, Dr. Sykes usually wore her white coat while she was working. She kept the jacket with her ID tag on it, draped over a chair in the robotics lab, and only wore it for special occasions. Such as when she's arguing with her daughter over experimentation, and when she's getting stabbed by her daughter with a katana. She's getting overpowered. You see, Dr. Sykes, she didn't want to fight Athena. She didn't want to fight her daughter and ruin her nice coat. So she just hooked the blade to the chest. In other words, the victim wasn't wearing her ID tag at the time. From the ro robot's point of view, her body was simply just another object. Objection! But Panko is equipped with a facial recognition system. If she really did move the victim, she would have recognized the body as Dr. Sykes. But she didn't. So that means... Objection! A face can easily be covered with a piece of cloth, a mask, or anything else of that matter. With her facial features hidden, the robot wouldn't be able to tell it was Dr. Sykes. Yeah. He's right. To summarize, Doc Miss Sykes stabbed her mother near the workbench. Then, using the robot, she moved the body to the table, where she removed the sword and was stained with blood. Yes, the eleven, the sheltered eleven-year-old girl was that cunning. Just really, I am scared of just what what Edgeworth was doing during DL6, basically. We don't know what Edgeworth truly thought of his father. We don't know if Edgeworth saw his father as weak after losing after losing to Manfred, after basically Manfred came in with the one, two, four, blackmail confession. Basically, just Jeff Mash is confessing. Edgeworth loses all faith in his father. Basically sees Manfred as the alpha male, and Edgeworth wanted to pay tribute to the alpha male. Why did the defendant move the body to the operating table in the first place? You want a reason? Very well. What? what You can't possibly have an explanation. Your emotions blind you to the truth. You can learn a lot from our robot friends. Calm and rational thought will open your eyes to the truth in front of you, Mr. Wright. Now then, do you remember the operating table's one special feature? I believe I read that robots can be assembled and disassembled there. Isn't that right? That's right. And to the defendant, who was just a child at the time. Yeah, and now Edgeworth is saying, just a child. The table was like a magic box that could make robots appear or disappear in seconds. But in the end, my mom just put it on the operating table and fixed it in a flash. I was so impressed by what my mom did. I even asked if she would put me on the table and fix me if I ever got hurt. It looked just like magic to me, what she could do. Y you can't possibly be suggesting. This young, sheltered girl had a difficult time distinguishing robots from people. See, Edward is explicitly stating that Athena had no pre- had no awareness of basically of what murder was, essentially. Basically just Athena thinking a human is the same as a machine, essentially. And yet Edward, he's like, first degree! But take a look at Ponko's but take a look at Ponko's arm. It was Miss Sykes who bandaged it up like that. She must have thought the machine heal in the same way people do people do. What an adorable naive mistake. It reminds me of my own grandchild. No way. I refuse to believe it! Miss Sykes made a childish, naive, and cruel mistake. Worthy of death worthy of the death penalty, right? Worthy of a life sentence with no parole. She thought that if a robot could be dismantled and vanished without a trace... But Ross, you're Edgeworth! I, if you're about to claim what I think you are, I demand that you word as delicate as you can! 
with all due respect, Your Honor, all I can do is present the truth as it's at. Yeah, though it's kind of odd how basically just the judge, he's drawing the line at this, basically assuming that just Mess's body was dismantled by the machine, basically. But yet when Edgeworth was outright telling Adrian Andrews, basically calling her out on bl any bluffs of self-harm, basically, just Edgeworth essentially saying, Oh, you want to disappear? Go, do it, disappear. And yourself. Here's the noose. Hedrick told me I knew. Yes, Hedrick. Do, do it. I'm not afraid. I want to see. I'm not afraid to see you die. Basically, just the judge not calling Hedrick out on that. But just here we have this. Maybe Hedrick then. I'm just forgetting about it. I don't remember lines word for word, really. The reason the defendant moved the victim's body to the operating table. Hold it. No. Don't say another word. Just stop was to dismantle the evidence so that she could get away with her crimes. That? That can't be... True! Order! Order in the court! Order in the court, I say! Edgeworth! She was just a little kid. How can you say such a horrible thing? <laughs> right, I shot my adoptive father. I was trying to shoot my biological father, but it, the bullet missed, went through the glass, and shot Mr. Von Karm in the shoulder. An unfortunate mistake that thankfully he rectified when he murdered my father. With the gun. Horrible, hmm? Like I said, you're just as green as ever. I came here today as a prosecutor to seek only the truth, no more, no less. My theory is simply the result of rational consideration of every possibility. Attention! The most gruesome ones. But but dismantling is the, the, the table's only function. It can make repairs as well. It's conceivable that Miss Sykes moved her mother to the table in order to fix her. Hmm, I suppose that could be another way of interpreting it. But dismantle or repair, it doesn't matter either way. Yes, it does, because basically, Athena wanted to repair her mother would imply that basically Athena wanted to bring her mother back, essentially. That her she wanted her mother to be healed. Basically, dismantle is like, I'm getting rid of the body. And I'm going to dump it in the shadow di shallow ditch. The shadow ditch. Like the shadow realm, but a ditch. What do you mean? After murdering her mother, Miss X may have come to her senses. Yes, which would basically conclude that basically, if Athena wasn't at her, wasn't basically thinking clearly and coherently, basically, if Athena wasn't with her faculties at the time of the murder, basically, she didn't go into the murder, into the whole encounter with murderous intent. It's not first degree. I'm sorry if I keep harping on it, but just the fact that Edgeworth is swinging hard with first degree. And, and the thing is, you could say, oh, Aura was put, was basically coercing. No, Aura said nothing about this being a first degree murder. Aura was not saying that Athena had to be convicted on first degree charges. All she was saying was, prosecute Athena. Edgeworth was the one who basically was going in with the one, two, first degree. Perhaps she did want to make it appear as if it had never happened. And that's why she re tried to repair her mother. That's one possible explanation. But, but, but we mustn't forget the facts of this case. The victim was observed to fall down after being hugged by the defendant. And the body was moved by the defendant's command. These two facts, the facts that indicate the defense's guilt, remain unchanged. This just can't be true. Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence to refute the prosecution's claim? Evidence. Right. Let's see. I can't think of any. I'm afraid I don't have any evidence. Since becoming Chief Prosecutor, I've learned that the truth isn't always pretty. Edgeworth only started learning that when he became the Chief Prosecutor. Like, he didn't learn that the truth isn't pretty when he was dealing with the whole Simon Keys debacle. Basically, when he learned that Simon was a se that Simon Keys was being hunted down by the ch by basically the ch former chief prosecutor, PIC chairman, just a, a na uh, foreign president, as well as basically a, as well as abused by an orphanage head, just because he was in the wrong place at the he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
and the fact that Simon had to live like that for several years and then ha felt the only way you could get out of it was by concocting some whole puppet master scheme. That wasn't, that wasn't, be that was a pretty truth to Edgeworth. There's like, oh yes, that was majestic. Seeing Simon, knowing that Simon Keys lived his life in terror, absolutely distraught at the thought of what if Blaze the best got his hands on him. He was, he lived his, he couldn't sleep at night. He lived in fear. Ah, such a delight. Now accept the truth, Mr. Wright. Your subordinate murdered her own mother. In the first degree! With all malicious intent! <laughs> Your Honor, the prosecution demands a verdict. The hostages have severed enough. What a terrible and tragic conclusion. If the defense has no counter-argument, I see no need to further prolong the trial. Edgeworth's arguments seem solid enough. But, but, there's no way Athena could have done could have ever done anything like that. What do I do? There has to be something. But I can't think of a single thing. P Prosecutor Blackwell! <laughs> this is quite the farce you are conducting here! I could die from laughter! Prosecutor Blackwell? What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Edgeworth Sama? You're going around claiming that Athena is so Machiavellian villain with no context. You're just going on with just pure conjecture, just dragging her name through the mud, acting like my sensei could have gone easily overpowered by an 11-year-old girl. Where do you get off spitting these lies? And after all I've done for you, you failed me, Prosecutor Blackwell. I did everything you said. I prosecuted the orca! I prosecuted the freaking Yokai man! I even handled that freaking high school drama case with you Ogana, you're a goner, that dead man speech and cardboard box girl! <laughs> I even got sent to the Shadow Realm when Robin Newman revealed her secret! And this is how you repay me for shame! What I'm talking about is that your argument is based entirely on a false premise. Go on, we're listening. Could this be the miracle I need? But what is Prosecutor Blackwell trying to pull here? Well, we'll answer that in the next episode, because I think that now would be a good time to end things off. Anyways, I... Excuse me. Anyways, I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer. I hope you come back for the next one. If you like, subscribe, comment, share, and do as you want. With that, I'll see you next time. Bye.